chapter 40. Let's read the whole chapter. Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. Because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into a high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has taught him? With whom did he take counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of justice, who taught him in knowledge, uh, and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket, and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beast sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known... Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. <coughs> Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth. Then he will also blow on them, and they will wither, and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And the strength of his power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be faint. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. 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 It's a beautiful chapter where the Lord is encouraging this people. Right? So comfort ye, comfort ye my people. So as we know like from chapter 40, it's about the New Testament, how God comforts his people. The main message is through his son, Jesus Christ, the comfort. He is called to be the consolation of Israel. So through his son, Jesus Christ, Lord comforts us. He is, the, he is comforting his people for all the troubles that they have went through. 
so he the lord says the lord, he, she has already received double for her all her sin and now it is the time to comfort as we saw in the last week's message god's comfort is to bring them back to him to repentance lead them to repentance that they may come to the lord that they may receive his comfort his blessing and his restoration so we see here the uh, to prepare the way of the lord to make ready a path for the lord to come it is not just the physical uh, uh, roads that needs to be made ready but it is our heart because god comes and dwells in our heart are the all the things that are lifted up needs to be brought low because god resists the proud we need to humble ourselves and receive the receive the the grace that the lord is giving so the there is a call the voice that is crying in the wilderness prepare the way for the lord we know that it's the voice of the of john the baptist and each and every one of us are called to be like that voice because there are people who are in the in in their in their sin who are in their who do not know the true god so we need to be as that voice in the wilderness the the word is jesus christ and we need to be the voice of the of that word proclaim <coughs> the the word of god so the message is also given by god so the, the 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 when he hears the voice of god what should i cry out and then the the word comes all flesh is like grass the um, the how fragile the life of human beings are it's like a grass it's like a flower that fades off when the when the wind blows it is it is just for a moment it's like a passing shadow it's so fragile the life of human beings but in the time that god has given the 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 one basic or the most important thing that we need to do is our soul needs to be saved repent to the lord know who our god is our redeemer is washed by the blood that that we could go to be with him forever so the, the, that's why in uh, psalm um, it says when you hear the voice of god do not harden your heart as in a rebellion when you receive the the word of god when you receive that light right not to resist maybe tomorrow i'll make the decision or maybe the day after right we should we should immediately respond to the voice of the of the lord not to not to postpone it no and then the and, and then again the message comes to zion right o zion you who bring good tidings those who have returned in uh, in isaiah chapter 35 you can see the redeemed of the lord shall return <coughs> they will come with singing to zion so the those who are redeemed are the persons who are in zion right those who are the ones who are been redeemed by the blood of jesus Christ, who are saved so those who are in zion god asked them to do the the work that god has called the nation of israel has been called to be as the priesthood a nation of priesthood the holy nation so the same duty the lord is giving to zion right when law when people come to the lord it's not that we alone are saved but we need to be as the witness for the lord when you read in zechariah 3 also when the lord restores uh, the high priest of Joshua by giving him the clean cloth and then there is also the placing of the turban on his head that's the authority that is being given so god calls us and sends us in mark uh, i think chapter 3 he chose the 12 disciples to be with him that he may send them right to be with him that we return to the lord we get the turn with the knowledge the teaching whatever god speaks to us we should be able to tell to the others it's not for us to keep right the 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 dead sea when it just keeps on receiving it uh, if it's not giving it become it starts to stink so we need to be the uh, channel the river that flows um so the lord calls zion to uh, you who bring good tidings get up into the high mountain o jerusalem you who bring good tidings lift up your voice so lift up your voice right you need to not speak in a in a whisper you need to shout shout to the to the people shout to the to the cities of juda the people who have not repented at who have not heard the uh, good news so they need to hear lift up your voice and what is the message you need to say behold your god turn them towards the lord look at your god who is your god so we need we will see that the the message that is given here is behold your god the same message when john says john the baptist says what did he say in john 1 behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world so behold your god the message that god gave is who is our god jesus christ so he points to jesus christ the same word the voice crying in the wilderness behold the lamp of god who takes away the sin of the world so the the fulfillment of that verse we need to point people towards 
Jesus Christ. So as, as he says, behold your God, we see the, the beautiful text as he uh, tells about as the Lord, the Holy Spirit, revealing about God's majesty, his greatness, his goodness, how mighty he is, the power of God being revealed in this, in this text, right? So it's a... Uh, it's very important how we think about our God. If we think our God to be small, then our problem seems to be very big. <coughs> but here, that's why it says, right, you, he, he points towards God to look at him, who your God is, how mighty he is, what he has done. Then we may be able, able to understand his love and put our trust in him. So it's, it's such a beautiful passage. The same thing in, in Job as we meditated last week also. Right? When Lord brought Job, when he suffered so much, he had so many questions. And his friends who came to comfort also so trying to find a reason for his suffering. But when, when God reveals himself, right, he did not say what the reason for what he was suffering and Job did not, um, did not ask again, but then he told about himself, he reveals uh, such a beautiful passage from Job 38 to 40, 41, <coughs> when you read, when God tells about himself, right, reveals his glory, his majesty, he said, um, Job says, I repent and I put my hand on my mouth and I repent in dust and ashes, right, when when you know the mightiness of God, how um, and how loving He is, how He takes care of each and every minute things in the universe in our life, then we will we will not question Him for something that is happening in our life. It will it will just seem like a, it's a shameful for us to go and ask the Lord to Lord, why did this happen to me? Right? We should have that when you know the the Lord, the, you will be able to trust Him and believe in Him and wait for Him. That's the message of this uh, uh, passage to behold your God that you may wait and the Lord will act on your behalf. So, so that's what we saw last week. So we will see the, and, uh, and, the and, and this verse says, right, the Lord is coming. The, Lord, the arm of the Lord will be revealed and his work will come before. He will be like a shepherd. And we meditated those verses last week and now we will see the mightiness of God, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, <coughs> measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighted the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. Who was, so that's, that's how the Lord's creative work, what the Lord created the heavens and the earth with the word. He spoke the word and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. The hollow of his hand is like this, right? It's just the hollow of his hand. He holds all the water that is in the in the earth, right? It, 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 he's such a mighty God. So the, the, the God is spirit, but here for us to understand, Lord reveals like the hand, the eyes, uh, the, uh, the the, the years of God. So all those are true for us for understanding. So here the Holy Spirit writes here who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. So he hold, holds everything, the waters we may serve, we may go through the waters but we may, we can, we should understand that it is all inside the control of the uh, Lord. He is mighty. The Lord on high is mightier than the waves or the mighty uh, sees the, the, the Lord is above everything. So he holds uh, he measures, measures the waters in the hollow of his, of his hand and he <coughs> measured heaven with a span. A span is like this, between the, this much, right? But the universe is it's expanding. Right? That's what we hear from the uh, from the research and also. But the Lord, uh, he, he just, uh, it's like he measures the heaven with a, with a span. And it's so mighty is our God. Just imagine, right? Even when you just stand outside and see the heavens, when you see the, what is visible to us, it's such a, it's so mighty that we cannot even number a, few, a group of stars in such a small place. But the, the Lord who measures the, the heaven with a span, right? He's, he's so big. Our God is so big. And he calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. The dust of each other of the earth. He could, he could measure them. Uh, he could uh, know them, each and every one. Weighted the mountains in scales and hills in a, in a balance. Those mighty mountains are nothing for God. He, did, he created them all. And, they, uh, and it's uh, under the Lord is able to weigh <coughs> the mountains. He's able to uh, lift them up. That even in our life, with the mountains that we are facing, it's, it's nothing God is able to 
lift them up easily and remove them. The, so the, it, it speaks about the creation of God, how mighty He is. And, uh, and when you see of the, the, uh, in, uh, the, the farthest star that they have the discovered is called Irendel. And it's 12.9 billion years, light years away from the earth. It's, uh, it's 12.9 billion light years. So one light year is 6 million miles. These are took from the internet. So how mighty our Lord is. The universe, that the, the farthest star that they have discovered now, <coughs> it is 12.9 billion years. For It takes so much of time for to receive that light. So, and there are many things about after that. And the galaxy, the most distant galaxy is HD 1, 3.5 billion light years away that the brother and the and that brightest sun star is 500 times larger than our sun and millions of times brighter than the the sun that we see right it's also called the name is called morning star right it's one of them they gave the name as morning star it's, a, it's the farthest thing that they have uh, seen. So the, the, the Lord created all of them. In Psalm 33, you can see by the breath, of, by His breath, He created those stars. If you take the Psalm 33, uh, 6 to 9, let's read those words. I can put them in the space to come. Psalm 33. Psalm 33 and 6 to 9. It says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Amen. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By his breath of, he created all the host, all the stars, the galaxies, the, all those were created by the, by the breath of the Lord. Amazing, right? The, the Lord is so powerful, so mighty. We, we should, um, um, many times, right, I have, uh, um, when there is something that is very difficult for to endure or things not going well, um, we we'll have to go back and read uh, how mighty our God is. I used to read uh, Job 38 to 41. To seek out for it is so easy for Lord. Whatever the struggles that we may face, it's nothing. When he when he asked Job, were you there when I laid the foundation of the earth? Were you there when I directed the path of the winds? Were you there? Right? He asked all those things. We are not. We do not know all those things. But God, who takes care of each and everything in the universe, every animal He feeds, not even one of the sparrow would fall outside the care of the Father. So how much more will He care for us? The things that we may see, it is difficult. It cannot happen. But with God, all things are possible. He holds the everything in his in his hand the hollow in the hollow of the hand he holds the the waters the mountain he's able to lift it and the heavens he is able to measure with the with a span so the, so we need to come to the lord that sometimes we forget that's why the lord is reminding here who their god is so the in in um, in, in many places right we can read in the old testament the they always proclaim what god has done for them how mighty their god is um, so that they won't forget. So now, let's read um, Isaiah 45, 18 to 22. So look to me. So the, the let's read them. So, yeah. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it, in, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited I am the Lord and there is no other look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other and there is no other for I am God there is no other look to me right don't don't just keep wandering away looking at your problems or looking at the circumstances but look to me look to me and be saved there is no other God there is no other um, thing that can help because the people were going towards the other other God so that they can get help so they were going going towards the, the uh, gods of the other nation thinking that those gods would help but the Lord is saying there is no other God I am the Lord look to me that you will be saved so the 
So we need to have that the, the understanding of who our God is. If we don't have that understanding, we will fall into the temptations of fear and then we will, uh, we will try to make our own gods. Right? So we need to be, that's why the Lord calls, look to your, look to your God. Who is your God? He is Almighty, the Creator, and uh, He is the true living God. Jeremiah 10, 10, it says He is the true living God. When Lord revealed it to, to Moses in Exodus 3, He said, I am, who I, I am who I am. So they are asking, the Moses is asking, well, how do I go and tell them who our God is? They had been in Egypt for 400 and 430 years and they would have really forgotten the revelation of God. And so he is asking, what should I go and tell them? It says, I am who I am. Right? I am one who is self-existent. God is a supreme being. He is self-existent. All things are contained in him. He created everything. Right? He, he, he does not grow weary as we read. He is from the beginning. He calls the end from the beginning. Right? We we met the way of the it. He calls the end from the beginning. He know what the end is. He calls it in the beginning itself. So he and he knows the entire thing. He is the first. He is the last. He everything is contained within God. There is nothing that is outside the wisdom of God and it is outside the power of God. So we. So the the uh, the Holy Spirit here then comforts the people. Asking them to look to God, to see who our uh, God is, uh, to have the clear understanding of, of, of our God. So in verse 14 it says, with whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice, who taught him knowledge and showed him the, the way of understanding. So the Lord is all wiser. He, he does not need anybody to counsel him, right? In the olden days, the kings had counselors. They had prophets, God ordained prophets to give them the counsel of the Lord. But God does not need one. He does not need anyone to counsel. When something happens in the country, uh, the, the kings or the authorities, they gather together and make a, uh, put their heads together and come up with a solution. But not for God because he is all wise. He does, nobody has to give a counsel to the Lord. With whom did he take counsel? No, no one can counsel the, the Lord. Who has instructed him? Can anyone instruct, Lord, this is the way you need to do this. We try to do sometimes say, Lord, this is how you need to answer this prayer. This is how I want it to be answered. No one can instruct, instruct the Lord. It, he, the, the Lord just hears all those things. I don't know how God will feel when we give instructions in our prayer. Lord, then do this one for me, do that for me for me, right? We need to submit to the will of God. Allow the Lord to direct our life. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to direct our paths. Up. And who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice. And taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. God is all wise, all knowing God. God alone is wise in, uh, um, in Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, 17. Now to King Eternal immortal, invisible to God who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever. All wisdom and knowledge are is in him. It is treasures in his, under his feet. He is all wise. God. No one can counsel him or give him the, the knowledge or, 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 or tell him what he needs to do to him. He is king eternal, immortal and invisible. God, God is great. His mighty in power, his understanding is infinite. There are many Psalms that talks about the, the mightiness of God, right? Oh Lord, how many fold are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possession, the creation of the of the Lord. Everything reveals the glory of God. Psalm 19, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful word, right? They, though, though, though they are not uh, um, speaking, but they reveal. Uh, let's read that uh, the first two, I think first three verses we we'll read. But the voices keep on be, uh, uh, coming. The, let's read one, two, one, two, three. Psalm 19, one, two, three. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Amen. So day and day unto day utter speeches, 
speech and night unto night reveals knowledge, the creation. It, it reveals the knowledge of God. It, it reveals about the mightiness of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. There is no speech. It may not be speaking, um, but the voice is being heard. The vo the, where their voice is not heard. Though there is no language or word that is put into those the creation, the story that the creation tells, but there is a message is being conveyed where their voice is not heard. It's there everywhere. No one can say that I, I do not know God. Everybody know that there is a great creator who is of divine power and the, and the glory and, and the, he is a, is a lord of glory. In Romans 1 as you all are memorizing now, right? So we know no one can deny that they, though they know God, they did not want to acknowledge him as God or give him thanks. Therefore, their mind became futile. Right? So the everybody, even in the in the, in the in the farthest part of the earth or in the deep jungle, people know that there is God, and they God has because His voice has been he heard everywhere. Um, so the. The, he, he, he made them all, the earth is full of your possession. In Psalm 104 again it says, the Lord, let Lord rejoice in his uh, creation. Lord rejoices in his creation. When um, How much more will he rejoice in each and every one of us whom he has made in his own, own image. Right. So the, in Psalm 139, the, um, the, there is a word which says, you have hedged me behind and before and you have placed your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful. It is high. I cannot attain it. Such a beautiful the verse. The Lord who has hedged us behind and before and placed his hand upon us. And it's, it's such a mighty knowledge of God, right? He cares for us, each and everything. Though we may, might not have known him for a long time, but he is the one who has been taking care of us. He is providing for us. He is leading us, guiding us. The, the family that he has given, um, where we grew up, the education, the everything God has provided. His hand was upon us. That knowledge is too wonderful. And, um, and David says, it is high. I cannot attain it. I cannot comprehend the, uh, the, the, the wisdom of of God, the mightiness of God, the love of God. Right? So the uh, our Lord is our greatest, our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Let's read Romans. That's uh, that's uh, after uh, uh, Paul writes about uh, how the nation of Israel. How Lord is going to do uh, deal with the nation of Israel in uh, in Romans nine to nine to eleven. At the end, when he understands uh, the mystery, how God is going to um, unite uh, uh, Israel or bring them back to Him, and how the Gentiles have been united with uh, with the Lord. Um, so he. he he just burst into a song there. Uh, let's uh, let's read Romans chapter 11, 33 to uh, 36. He, he's he's not. He just uh, his soul starts to sing. He's uh, Romans chapter chapter 11. Can we read that verse? The last few verses. For oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable all His judgments and His ways, past finding out. For who, can, for who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. For him, and through him, and to him are all things, to him be glory for our Amen. Amen. Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God, right? The Christ, Christ is the wisdom of God. God. He is the He is the wisdom and the power of God. So the 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 message of the salvation. It's it's a it's the uh, the wisdom of God. The salvation, right? Uh, he, it does not have to be for rich people. Not restricted to rich. You need to be rich to be saved. No, it is not for the educated or for you need to be born in such a such a place to be saved. It's, it's so simple. The gospel is simple. Believe in Jesus Christ. You will be saved right so that's the message of the cross so also he when he understands that right when we come so the the previous verse it says he has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all so we just have to come ask the lord for his mercy so when we receive that mercy we are saved the riches of the of the of the lord inheritance in christ jesus we receive it when he thinks about that what god has done for us he says how great how how were the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of god 
how unsearchable are his judgment. The Jewish people thought they are the one, they are going to be saved, they are the clean people, holy people, God is going to take them all with him and the Gentiles are unclean. But then when he sees how God brought the Gentiles in, the, 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 the wild olive trees, and he grafted them into the, into the shoot, and they also come to see the riches of, the, of, of, of Jesus Christ. So when he understands that, he says it's, it's, his understanding is unsearchable. It is ways past finding out. No human mind can understand that. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him that it shall be repaid, that he should answer us, or give it back, to us to know it is because of his love, because of his great mercy that he gives it to all for him, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. So all things are for God. He created everything for his glory. It is, we are created for his glory. He created us for him, not for us, not for our parents, right? not for anybody else, but for him. Him. We are created by Him, through Him, and for Him. So we'll read the verse 21. It's, read, it's read similar to the creation. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? So these are the, uh, uh, Isaiah the prophet is asking this question to the, to the people. Have you not known this? The, the, the creation, the creation and how God is our creator and he is our, um, uh, he, he is the all wise God. He is mighty in power. So have you not known this? Or have you not heard about it? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the of the earth? Why, why is that? It is difficult for you to see who our God is or how mighty he is, what the, the greatness of our God has said. Have you not heard it? So there's, there's a message that not only that we come to know the Lord, but also we need to tell it to, the, uh, to our people. When you read Psalm 78, um, we read from uh, we read, read those verses at 78 from 1 to 27. It says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, uh, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, telling to the generation to come the, uh, to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done that the generation to come might know them, the children who would, who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. So, that, so here the psalmist is saying, we have heard from our fathers, our fathers have told us, Right? So we will not hide them from their children. We will, uh, we will not hide them from our children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, the strength and his wonderful work, to pass on the knowledge, the revelation that God has done, what God has done in our life, how he has led us, how we became, uh, we were saved, and how Lord has led us each and every day, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandment. The important thing is that they will remember to keep, they will keep their hope on God. God who is mighty, who is mighty to save, He is their God and they will walk in His, in His way. Psalm 22, last two verses also says the same, that we will declare it to the, that he is righteous to the children who is yet to be born. A prosperity will serve him. They will be recounted to be the generation of the, of the Lord. They will come and proclaim to the people who are not yet born. So that keep on try giving that knowledge, what God has revealed to us, what we have received. So Paul writes, what I received, I give it to you one day when we have that revelation we should we will be able to pass on so so he he's saying here right have you not known is that not known to you it, it has been the the revelation of god was given to the jewish people right so they should have known much much more than the other pagan nations have you not known that have you not heard has it not been told to you from the uh, from the beginning return to that return to the knowledge of god because in uh, in um, i think we have put in a different place it says, I do not take any uh, any delight in the sacrifice, but in the knowledge of. But 
by do I do not take any delight in the in the sacrifices, but in the knowledge of God. I, I think it's in Jeremiah chapter nine. Let's just read that. Do not glory in your wisdom or glory in your uh, um, strength, but that you know the Lord. Jeremiah nine. So the Lord says that he may know me, that, uh, but let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord, to know the, to know the Lord. So that is what is pleasing to the Lord, the knowledge of God, so that we will not wander away to other gods. Because the Israelites did not retain that knowledge, they went after other gods. They did not hold on to the word of God that was revealed to them. They went after other gods, seeking that those gods may, may save him. We, we, see, we see about uh, Ahaz, when he went to the Assyrian and he saw that they are uh, Assyrians and he saw that they, they were they lost with the battle. He thought maybe those uh, Assyrian gods are greater than our God and he bring all those altars and he built it near in, in Jerusalem. Right? So because they lost the, the knowledge of our God. And, uh, and Hosea also can read my people are destroyed because they lack the, the knowledge because they were ignorant of who their God is. But the, but the Lord's call is not only that we, we receive that revelation but also to pass on to the uh, to the generation to come that they may set their hope in God and not forget them but they do, if they, they, they don't remember they then it is if they easily get um, um, taken away by the things that they are that are in the world um, so the who he who sits uh, above the circle and its inhabitants are like grasshopper who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in he brings the princess to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall they stop, take root in the earth. When he will also blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. All the nations, the things that are in this world are nothing before the almighty God. So the so, uh, and, and, uh, so we can also see that in the, in the previous verses he says that uh, um, the uh, the nations are like a drop in the in the bucket. They were people uh, in Israel. They were afraid of the nation of Azria and also the judgment that is going to come through Babylon. But the Lord is giving them this word that all these nations, right? They are not nothing before before the Almighty God. God created those nations. He put them the uh, the boundaries for each nation. They may think they can grab other nations, but it is not unless God allows. Right? He draws the boundary, uh, not. The the, not the kings of those nations. He, he is the one who controls everything. He's above, he's supreme, he sits above on the on, uh, above everything. And he behold the nations are as a drop in a in a bucket. Can you just imagine right that it's a, each nation it's like a it's a drop in a in a big bucket of water. It's just a small drop. Maybe then they may think that they are great nations. Iran may think that it's a great nation, but it's nothing. It's like a drop in the in the in the bucket in the in, in the sight of God. God. It is counted as small dust on the on the scale. You just think uh, you're weighing uh, in a weight balance, right? If there's a small dust added to anything, is it going to make a big change? Nothing at all. That's how God sees the uh, nations, right? We may see those nations are terrible. They thought they saw Assyrian nation to be as a terrible nation. They are coming against the uh, children of God. But God says, do not fear them. They are nothing, nothing before the before the Lord. It's like a small dust on the on the scale. So beautiful words, God, how God he, he reveals himself uh, through, through the, the, the Holy Spirit giving these words. Uh, so in, when you read it at the stretch, uh, Isaiah chapter 40 to uh, 55 is one full prophecy. 
and God comforts his people. Uh, we see Isaiah 53 where the, uh, we see about the crucifixion of our Lord and the restoration in 54 and 55. Right From 40 to 55, it's one, uh, one full prophecy for how Lord is going to restore the nation of Israel. And then from 56, it's about the Gentile nations. Right, So, so when you read, when you, it's good if you sit and read the entire, uh, the revelation that is given from Isaiah 40 to 55. It's beautiful. Um, how Lord um, reveals himself and tells them where they have um, gone wrong depending on the idols and how they need to return back. I have not cast you off. That's what Lord says. I have not forgotten you. I have engraved you in my, in my hand. And Lord, the revelation of Jesus Christ is given in, um, in, in, in chapter 42, 49, 52, 53. Right? So the... So it's, a, it's, it's good to read it together. And here the Lord says, the nations are nothing before, uh, before me. He lifts up the isles as a, as a very little thing, the island nations. He's able to lift them up as a, as a small thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beast sufficient for a burnt offering. The Lord, the, 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 there is nothing that you can bring to me. Uh, as a sacrifice or an offering to please the Lord. God does not take any, any bribes. You cannot bribe God. Right? God, God has, because of His mercy, we receive. Because of the fullness of Jesus Christ, we receive grace after grace. No one can bribe God. He says that the, the Lebanon, even if you burn the whole Lebanon as a sacrifice, that is not sufficient uh, for, for me. The, the only sacrifice that God accepts is the, is the blood of Jesus Christ. That alone has satisfied. That it atoned for the sin of the whole world. Nothing else can, can, uh, can, can be sufficient to as a sacrifice, nor it's be sufficient for a uh, for a burnt offering. So if you read uh, Psalm 50, 12 to 15, um, the Lord says that if, if I am hungry, I would I would I ask you? All the cattle on the thousand hills are are mine. Um, but but uh, but the thing that God wants us is um, is to to so sacrifice of praise, to praise Him, to thank Him, to humble before Him. Read those verses, I, uh, Psalm 15, verse 12 to 15. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Amen. So the, the Lord says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So the Lord's call is to thank Him, to trust Him. Call upon me means you, you, the Lord says, You trust in me. And uh, not that you can uh, um, uh, you can bribe me or uh, or, or uh, influence me to do good, but God is good, right? So what the, what the Lord is saying is completely trust in the in the goodness of God, of who God is, and, and not to not, not that uh, I will be pleased with those uh, sacrifice. The sacrifice that Lord is pleased is ourselves giving ourselves to the the Lord. That is acceptable to the uh, Lord. Offered to God, thanksgiving. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will, you will, you shall glorify uh, me. So the Lebanon is not sufficient to to burn. Those sacrifices are not enough. It's not going to um, uh, go, 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 going to satisfy. But the but the blood of Jesus Christ. We go to the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has given us the boldness to enter this holy of holies through the blood of Jesus Christ. What's an amazing uh, blessing it is through when you read in Hebrews, right? The, the Hebrew book is such a great blessing to you can see how the fulfillment of the Old Testament, all the system of sacrifice and worship fulfilled in Jesus Christ in, John, in, uh, in Hebrews. Uh, um, uh, when, when we go to the presence of God with boldness because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So, the, so only the blood of Jesus Christ can, can be sufficient to atone for us. And all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted by him less than nothing and, and worthless. So it, it, it is worthless before God. So do not fear the nations. Do not fear the things that we may see. Right? We may not be not that the may, big nations are coming against us but we, we may have things that are happening in our life that are coming against us. That may be scary. We may think like how we are going to deal with this. It may look 
look like it is just going to overtake us. But the Lord here says all those are nothing. In, in Isaiah 41 you can say you may see, seek them, but you will see them no more. It becomes as a non-existent thing. God is able to remove them. Do not fear. I am your God. Do not be dismayed. I am. Uh, do, do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God, and He upholds us. These nations are nothing before before the Lord. It is nothing. And to whom? So the. So not to be afraid. Do not fear the reproach of men. Nor be afraid of their insult. In Isaiah 51. Uh, seven, and, seven and eight, right? Lord can, Lord, Lord can remove all those enemies. It, it's an easy thing for the Lord. So we need to, we need to trust in the Lord. That's what the Lord reveals to, um, uh, to, to Abraham in Genesis of 17, right? Before that, you can see the, uh, the Hagar chapter 16 is about Hagar when uh, God, when uh, Abraham brings uh, Hagar and then has a uh, uh, Ismail, right? But Lord is revealing Himself, saying, "I am Almighty God." Walk before me and be blameless. And so the, it's, it, uh, he, re, he says, I am almighty God. Not that you need to help me thinking that this is the way God wants to do it. Not give counsel or, uh, or, uh, or, thaw, or instruction to God. But I am almighty God and I am able to do what I have promised. So the, he says, you walk before me and be blameless. For each and every one of us, that's the, that's the word, to walk before him blameless right we we do we, we should trust in him completely not taking our own uh, decisions or thinking that this is how god wants to do in our life but completely trusting in the lord and walking blameless before god walk before me and be uh, blameless in the sight of god so the, the, the because he is almighty he is able to do what he has promised he is all wise god his plans are higher than our plans his ways are higher than our ways he declares that to us he i know the plans that i think towards you so the the, the we need to be blameless before god that to be uh, uh, um, the lord in, Gen in genesis 15 god calls abraham and shows him look at the stars and i'm going to make your descendants like this but the, the thing is, we need to be blameless before Him. That the revelation, we need to hold on to who God is and not deviate from that. And, uh, to who will you liken God and what likeness will you compare to Him? The workman holds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold and the silversmith casts silver chain. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for his, himself a skillful workman to prepare a card image that will not totter. So this is uh, about uh, the, uh, the idol worship, right? When, when the, so the people, uh, uh, the, the, the making of idols, it's some, if people are afraid of certain things, they wanted to please God, and so they make it as a God and bring sacrifices to it. And if someone is afraid of the wind, they try to make a wind God so that they can sacrifice to it and give something to it so it will please him and it will not do any harm. So that's how all these idols have uh, come. Uh, the sun god or the, or, the, or the sea or the fire, all those, right? The, the, whatever makes them to be afraid or something that they love, they want to make it as, a, uh, as an idol and, um, uh, and, and worship that. So the Lord is saying here, the, those are the, 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 who, the who, to whom will you compare those uh, uh, idols that you make. You try to make a, an idol with the wood, but you know that it is going to rot. So they want to find a, find a good tree that will not, a tree, choose a tree that will not rot. And they want to overlay it with gold and silver so that it is, it is not going to be rot. Or because it cannot do anything by it itself, it needs to be put in place, um, nailed or uh, uh, so they, they put so that it will not fall off, that it will not totter, to prepare a carved image, that it will not totter. It cannot stand on its own, it cannot move on its own, it cannot do anything, uh, but you are doing all those things, you prepare a guard for yourself, thinking that that's going to do, to, uh, to save, right? How? Um, how ignorant and foolishness it is. And unless God reveals to us that, that we are all like that, we were all like that, 
but god in his mercy revealed it to us that is nothing that is the work of the of man's hand which has no eyes no ears it cannot say and so uh, so the the maker the those who make the idols are like that it's what the word says so but god in his mercy revealed us the true living god that we should not go back to these type of things the idols the workman more the molding an image in our hearts or in physically right you get rid of all those things that are so god is saying to whom will you like and me can you compare me to any of these that you are making that nothing can compare to the almighty god no we cannot contain uh, the almighty god to the uh, to to these idols that they make with their with their hand now, not only that they they uh, they dishonor god by making this image uh, but also they this uh, god created human being to be above all creation he created them and gave them dominion over all the uh, all the things in the animals birds god gave dominion over all those things he said go and rule over them but when he makes an image in the image of an animal or a bird or of the sea or the sun he is bowing down before that he is degrading himself right he is reducing himself on which god gave authority right that's how it is it, 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 the idol worship is he's 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 uh, giving allowing those things on which he needs to rule over to take over him um, so the the lord the lord looks at those state of the uh, the the heart of people right so it, it just grieves the lord when they do that i gave them authority to rule over them but they are making that as an idol and and falling down before in isaiah in, cha, in a, my, my, my many chapters in isaiah you can see how the lord uh, condemns this idol worship in the nation of israel where the revelation of what god was uh, given so the so we, so the message was to go and say behold your god to look at the lord the lord our creator god so the we saw about the creation the almighty god who created everything his mightiness and we saw the wisdom of god how wise he is how no one can instruct him and there is nothing that we can do to to please him uh, and uh, um, and about how we cannot compare him to any anything else and when when john the baptist brought the message right he is the forerunner the fulfillment of isaiah chapter 40 the voice in the wilderness he said behold behold the lamp of god so behold the god as it is in isaiah 40 it's the it's the lamp behold jesus christ the revelation the full the the, the, the image of god in bodily form in, in jesus christ behold the lamp look to to look to the lamp of god look to him and be saved in the revelation also we see those who they will look to him whom they have pierced then we will be saved unless we look to him we cannot receive the salvation when we look on to the to the lamp of god was slain for us in all things were made through him he is the creator god as we saw the revelation in the in isaiah 40 who created everything it was created by through jesus christ all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made all things were created by jesus christ and it was for him we were created we are created for him and no one can know him unless he declares it to us and so the john the baptist points the people towards the lamp of god to jesus christ and then i just put some verses to uh, to say that the lord uh, when he was on this earth he had authority all authority all power was in the hand of of the of the lord jesus christ he the he spoke with authority he had authority over sicknesses he drove out the demons he has authority over the demons of upon the sickness upon the upon death upon the Uh, upon the sins he forgave he is the son of man had authority on earth to forgive uh, sins so he is god incarnate god in flesh and he is the one who is the consolation of israel because the first word in isaiah 40 says comfort comfort ye my people the comfort comes only through jesus christ he is the consolation of of israel he is the one who comforts us that's why lord in, uh, in matthew 11 says come unto me all those who are weary and heavily 
word and I will give you rest. The rest is only in Jesus Christ. When you come to him, we receive the rest. So if, if something that is bothering your heart or something that is troubling you or things that are not going well, right? remember this verse, God has called us, he will give us rest to take away that weariness, that burden from us. Right? Sometimes we know that this is going to work out well, but the path that we go through may be difficult. So you ask the Lord, Lord, you promise that you will give us the rest. Take this burden away from me. Give me the peace. Give me the rest. Right? We need to ask the Lord and receive it. Sometimes it, it may be difficult, the things that we may go through, but the Lord has promised his rest for us. He has promised his peace for us. We do not have to be weary and heavily burdened. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. We can see so many verses says, rejoice in the Lord. So restore to me the joy of salvation. salvation. So we need to, we should not allow the enemy to bring that fear. It is the spirit, the spirit of fear. So we should not allow that spirit to come into our heart. We need to have a have the understanding of God. Go back to see how God is. Read Job 38, 39, 40. So see how God, how mighty our God is. Not allow any fear into our heart. He is the consolation of, of Israel. So it's a beautiful verse in Revelation 7, 16. Uh, Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. And uh, when you read of uh, can you read Revelation 7, 16 and 17? They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the fountain of living water. Sorry, to the living fountain of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. When God wipes, right, we are comforted. We are not going to weep anymore. So he is a shepherd who leads us in the midst of the throne. He will shepherd them and like, a, like a good shepherd, a loving shepherd leads us and he brings us to the fountain of living water. Jesus said, I am the, the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will thirst. No more hunger and thirst. They will not hunger and thirst. Jesus Christ is the, is, is the one whom, who has been sent for us that we could be comforted in God, he wipes away all the tear, all the struggles in this world, he will, he will remove it. We may, we may pass through difficulties, but the Lord who walks along with us, he is with us, he wipes away our tears, he carries us in his bosom, as we read in Isaiah 40, 11, he carries them, gathers them in his arm and carries them close to his heart. Such a mighty God, tender love, loving kindness of God, right? So we should understand that and rest in the uh, rest uh, in him who who has given himself completely uh, to us so behold the lamp of god look to him so what does these revelation uh, uh, do right all these are given to us so that we will be strengthened in the lord right the the, the thing is the the question that the the nation had is why do you say O jacob and speak O israel my way is hidden from the lord and my just claim is passed over by my god why is not lord looking at my uh, ways why does he not look at my struggle why is Lord not helping me? Why is that? Why this is a just claim? Um, so this is something that is very basic that I need. There may be sometimes the basic needs are not met, but you may think, why is the Lord not answering this? This is such an important thing in my life, right? But the Lord says the answer to that is right. So the Lord is Lord is everlasting God. He is the Creator of the ends of the earth. He do not grow weary or tired. It's not that he has do not have the strength to do it to you, but in all his wisdom, right, he makes everything beautiful in its in its time. He is the Lord who does it for for us. All things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his his purpose. So the understanding of the Lord, the the wisdom of God and his love gives us the strength to wait. So the thing is, right, we need to, to wait in, a pre, in his presence. He who gives power to the weak and those who have no might, he increases the strength. So the, the waiting is difficult. So we may grow weary and tired. So the Lord says, the, 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 he gives that strength to wait and that we may, he increases the strength. The youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God, is, God does not 
weary or faint. The same strength he gives to his children, so the youth may be weary and, and they may go faint. But those who wait will not be weary, they will not faint. Right? God, God gives his children the strength that they we will be like him. He increases the strength. He increases the strength. When you feel weak, Lord, I am not able to do this. Lord, I need more strength. You ask, he gives strength to the weak and increase the power of those who do not have any might. He increases to those who do not have the strength. He increases it. You ask, ask and receive it. Lord said, ask and it will be given to you. So all these are promises of God, right? We need to ask the Lord, Lord, you give me the strength. You give me the strength to do this, Lord. You give me the wisdom to, to do this. You lead me, Lord. You tell me, Lord. You instruct me, Lord. Right? We need to wait upon him. Trust him. Such a loving father is everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, who created the heavens and the earth, who created you in his own image. He is our Lord who gives us the strength to endure. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The people who are studying with you, maybe they are all, they do all the work very smartly. But you may think, how am I going to do these things? But when you trust in the Lord, if, if the Lord Almighty God, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, He will give you the strength. He, Christ has become the wisdom for us from God. Right? Beautiful verse in, in 1 Corinthians 1, 1 third. Lord has become, Christ has become the wisdom for us from, uh, from God. You pray that, Lord, you be my, you, it says, you are my wisdom. Christ is the wisdom for us, right? You don't need anything else. Christ has become the wisdom for us. He is our redemption. He is our sanctification and He is our righteousness, our sanctification and our, our redemption. If you've taken that verse, you can read uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 13. For of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And redemption. He is our, Christ is our wisdom, he is our righteousness, and sanctification and our, and our redemption. All that we need is, is in him. Jesus Christ with you. Right? It's, the, it's, a, it's the greatest of blessing. And of all that you need is him. You listen to the voice of the Lord and, and walk with the with the Lord. So I just put some verses here, the Job 38 to when we don't when we don't understand the counsel of God, we, we darken the counsel by words without knowledge. That's why the first 27th verse, um, why did, why is my way hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God. Why is my prayer not answered? I've been praying for so many years. Right? So we do not understand the counsel. We should we counsel because of lack of knowledge of what is what God is going to do in that situation or what God is going to bring forth from that. But we need to trust in the Lord. Um, there's such a great blessing to wait on the Lord. Many verses are there and I'll just say, uh, and the, the highlighted one, maybe we'll just go. It is good to wait for the Lord. The Lord is good to all those who wait for Him. It is good to wait for the Lord. Blessed are those who wait for Him. Those who wait for him will not be ashamed. And so how do we wait? We wait patiently. We wait with expectation. Psalm 62 1 says, Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. So we wait for him with an eagerness. Yes, it is coming. I wait silently before God. Not, not just passively waiting. Waiting in, in prayer. Ever trusting in the Lord that we, our strength will be renewed, we wait and we renew our strength, that we will not be weary and we rise up. Right? So we wait with expectation and we wait with watching. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my uh, doors, watching and waiting. Uh, waiting for the coming of the Lord, waiting for his, uh, uh, his answer to our prayers or waiting for the thing that we are uh, expecting. And uh, I'll be watch and wait. And also the Lord, uh, Proverbs 40 says, he who, whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit, so he who waits on his master will be will Honor. be honored. The good or the fair the, in, the, in the parables of the Lord Jesus said about the servants who will be waiting. Blessed is the servant who waits when the, when the master comes and he, he sees him waiting. Right? Um, so, and the, the Lord will surely give in the due season. 
So the way we wait in the Lord and renew our strength. The Psalm 84, 7 says, they go from strength to strength. Each one appear before God in Zion. So the Lord who, who, who will give us the strength to rise up on wings like eagle, that we may, we may run, we may not be weary, we will walk and not faint. So there is a rising up, that we may run for him, run the race that has been set before us, and walk with him humbly. Right? So that's the, the, the when Lord reveals himself. Each and every day as God reveals him through the word of God, that gives us the strength to more trust in Him, that we may re, 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 get strengthened and we may run the race with endurance that has been said before us. Behold the Lord. So that's the message that we receive and we need to climb up the mountain and to, with loud voice, shout. It, it says with, with loud, you need to proclaim it. Lift up your voice with strength and you... Lift it up, be not afraid, say to the cities of, of Judah, behold your God. To, learn, to receive that strength from the Lord and lift up our voice and, and to proclaim the gospel. Paul says, woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. We who have received the light, not to keep it to ourselves. We should not just be worried about the things that are happening in our life because when you look to God, right? That's why Lord called Abraham outside. He was sitting in the in the in the tent and worried. Lord, how am I going to get a get a son? You promised this, but I don't know. Maybe my servant is going to be the inheritor. But God calls him out and shows him all the stars. If you could count, these are the number of descendants I'm going to give you. So trust in the Lord. Look to him. Look above. And look to Lord Jesus Christ. And he will give the strength. And we also need to be the one who need to rise up, climb the mountain, be filled with the strength, lift up our voice, that we may so point to others, look to Jesus Christ. Look to me and be saved all the ends of the year. So that's the message. Look to him. We be saved. That we could be that voice crying in the wilderness for the others to see and be saved. So that's 